Rupert Taylor. I'm the executive chef of Bowood Golf and Spa, and today we're going to make my crab recipe. It's crab, Cornish crab, with um, homemade crumpets and Thai puree. The first thing we're going to do is get the crab cooking. What we're going to do, we've got a big pan of water here. We're going to fill it with salt. You want about 50 grams of salt per litre of water. Or as a great chef once said, as salty as the sea. We're going to put that back on just to bring it back up to the boil very quickly. Here we have a lovely, lovely crab for all the way from Cornwall, freshly delivered this morning. We've used uh, a piece of equipment here called a cruster stun, which has stunned it, made it completely limp, and it makes it more humane, humane way of cooking. That's going to go into the, into the water, and that's going to be in there for approximately 12 minutes. So now we're going to make the homemade crumpets. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take the, the milk. We're going to warm it just to blood temperature, the same as if you're making bread. The ingredients is basically flour, salt, sugar, yeast, milk. We're going to warm that gently. In, the, in here, we've got the flour. We've, we used uh, dry, instant, uh, fast acting yeast instead of the fresh one because we want it to prove quicker. Salt and sugar. Now always make sure you mix the three in separate parts of your bowl because the salt will kill the yeast and so will the sugar until the milk's in. Once the milk is up to blood temperature, so about 38 degrees, we're gonna pour it in. We're gonna give it a good mix around. and then we're going to leave it to prove for about 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to cover it with a damp cloth. Proving is where the sugar, salt and yeast start to react. They start to create um, gas um, and that creates bubbles. Therefore, that will then lift, lift the, the mix up, um, doubling it in size. We're going to put it somewhere nice and warm and we shall leave it there. While that is happening, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the Thai puree. Now, to make the Thai puree, what we have is we have a, a homemade mixture here of galangal, which is a, a Asian ginger. It's not as fiery as, as normal ginger. Lemongrass, green chilies, coriander, kaffir lime leaves, garlic. We're going to get our, get our shallots, into the pan, and we're going to start those sweating off. Meanwhile, we've got more garlic to add and more lemongrass to add. This is going to give an extra floral note to the finished puree. In those go. We're going to add the Thai paste that we've already made. We're going to add that in as well. It's quite fiery, so we only add a tablespoon and we're going to let that all sweat down until the shallots and onions are all translucent. You can smell already. You can smell the flavour of the ginger, the lemongrass, the garlic, the chilli. You can smell it. smells like Asia. If any of you guys have ever been to Asia or anything like that, you'll understand what I mean. Or if you like cooking in uh, the Asian food, you'll understand. If not, you'll be learning now. While the puree is cooking, and sweating down, we're going to start to make our garnish for the top of it. And what we have is three three different types. We have spring onions, we have uh, kohlrabi, which is like a cross with almost like a turnip, and some cucumber. You can see how the cucumber is nice and green. What we've done is we've compressed that in the backpack machine. We've basically peeled the skin, we've blitzed it up, we've passed it, and then we've added it back with the cucumber into the bag. Then we sous vide it under pressure, and that green green colour goes into the cucumber. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we are going to use a machine called a spiralizer. Now this is this is machine is a brilliant machine. 
It basically means you can get like long spaghetti out of any, any vegetable or fruit. And we're just gonna twist it through like so. Same with the kohlrabi, we're just gonna trim it now. Get rid of all that tough skin. And then onto the spiralizer. And just like so. Again, only needing one portion. Into the ice water. Onto the spring onions. So the spring onions, we're gonna do a cut here called a chiffonade, which basically means very fine. I'm not sure if that's the correct French translation, but that's what it, that's what it means to me. And this is one of your knife skills that you are going to need and you will use throughout your career as a chef. And then we'll put that into the ice water as well. All these vegetables now, in five minutes time, will be really crispy. But as you can see now, the onions are going translucent. It means they're sweating down with no color. And at this stage now, if you follow your recipe cards, we're now gonna add the, the fish stock. We make a clear white fish stock here using uh, turbot bones and uh, sole bones. And we're gonna reduce that down until there's nothing left. Then take the crab out using a spider. Rest it there for the moment just to get rid of any excess hot water. And then we're gonna put it in a bowl. And what we do here is we won't put them in ice water because if we put it in ice water, all that water goes back into the crab. So what we do here is we put it straight into our blast chiller, or you could just leave it on the side to cool, but if you have a blast chiller, put it into your blast chiller. So what we're gonna do, we have a blast chiller. Basically, this is gonna flash freeze the crab. It's gonna cool it down within minutes. We open it up, just put it in the blast chiller, and then start. So while this is reducing, we're just gonna check our crumpet mix, just see, see what it's doing. You can see it's just starting to form air bubbles just here and here. That's a good sign, it means it's starting to activate, it's starting to work. So as, as this is reducing, this is gonna take a few minutes. I'm just gonna to talk to you a little bit about myself, my career, and, and where, I, where I sort of, uh, what I've done, really. So I started off like you at Bath College. Um, I started in 1996, uh, from there, I left and went to Homer Park where I worked with, for a chef called Gary Jones, who is now Raymond Blanc's uh, executive head chef of the Manoir Cat Saison and has been for the last 15 years, I believe. From then I went to work at the Royal Crescent, again in Bath. And whilst, whilst there, I, I did a little stint uh, for Martin Blunos at the Letané, uh, free paid work called a stage and then met a guy called Nick Evans and moved with him up to Newbury. From, from Newbury Manor, which is a 3 Z one star Michelin, I then went to work, very luckily, for a guy called Heston Blumenthal at the Fat Duck. This was back when it was a two stars. I was part of the original team that got the three stars, got the best restaurant in the world twice, twice uh, in two years. And from there, I then went off to open up Jamie Oliver's down in Watergate Bay and then decided to take a bit of, uh, bit of time away from um, cooking, but not cooking as in, um, the, as in main kitchens. So I decided to go do a couple of ski seasons, to which I worked for a very good company who have some of the best uh, super chalets across the, um, across the Alps. And then decided to move back to uh, England and I moved back to Wales in Abergavenny, where I was head chef at the Bennett Skenfrith, which is a three rosette uh, Michelin Bib Grimond AA restaurant with rooms of the year. We won Michelin Pub of the Year. And from then, me and my wife decided to go and work on cruise ships. We worked for a company called Celebrity. Celebrity Cruises are one of the high end cruise ships. They're not really a party cruise ship, it's more for adults and it's all about good food. From there, we came back, we, we got a pub just outside of Bristol. And from there, we sold the pub. I then went, very luckily, uh, managed to get a job at a place called, a restaurant called Allium in the Abbey Hotel, again, a three rosette restaurant. And I took over from the, the chef patron, uh, Chris Staines. He 
um, is a brilliant chef in his own right. I was very lucky to be following in his footsteps. And from there, I've come here to Bowood. Now, if any of you know Bowood, Bowood is a massive estate, it's a 2,000 acre estate. We have Lord and Lady Lansdowne that live over the other side in their, in their, um, in their house. This is, the, this is the hotel, Golf and Spa. We're a PGA uh, golf course, which means we're one of the best in the Southwest. We have, we are 42 rooms. We offer a full fine dining experience, but we also run a brasserie, we have a spa, and obviously a gym. I've been here since February this year, and the good thing about working here is because we've got so much land, we have a kitchen garden that's four acres, we have plenty of forest to go foraging, we have game such as uh, venison, uh, pheasant, teal, you name it, we have it here. We also graze and rear our own sheep. We're starting to raise our own cattle for next year, so all this will be on the menu. So we're becoming quite self-sufficient here, which is very, very good. And also means we can change the menus seasonally all the time. As you can see now, the fish stock is almost completely reduced. We need to retain just a little bit of moisture to help it when we blend it. Now, to get that really vibrant green color, we're gonna add a bit of blanched spinach, and then we're gonna put this in a blender and blend it to a puree. It's, it's wilted down, it's warm, it's hot, we're gonna transfer it to the blender. As you can see, it needs a bit more liquid, so we're just gonna add a splash of coconut milk to it. This should help it uh, continue the puree process. We add this towards the end, because coconut milk is light, light and fresh. And if we added it at the beginning, we wouldn't get the flavor of the co fresh coconut. As you can see, it's now completely pureed down. The next stage, is to start cooking the crumpets. So we've just flipped the crumpet now, we'll take the ring off. As you can see it's nicely golden on that side, just starting to get golden on this side. Just going to start to warm the puree. And our next stage is to pick the crab. Okay, so you may have noticed now I've swapped areas of the kitchen. This is because here at Bowood, we operate a raw side and a, and a cook side. This is for cook side. Um, what we have here is the crab. I'm using a yellow board, because again, it's a cook ready to eat uh, product. And now we're just gonna take it apart. So the first thing to do is to turn the crab over and take off the legs. These are probably the trickiest things to um, to pick the crab meat out of. There's not a lot of meat in there, but there still is some meat. And now we're going to take off the claws. Obviously, this is where the predominantly most of the meat is. And you see, most of the meat will be here. There's some more meat here, and there's some meat in here. There is some tiny bits of meat in here. Again, you know, we don't want to waste anything, so we'll pick all that through as well. What we do now is we now firmly grasp the crab shell and you'll see here where the sort of the bottom meets the head and what we're going to do is we're going to grab the shell very tightly with our thumbs push up and that is going to release the body from the crab. So the bits really to miss on the crab are these things, these guys here, these are called dead man fingers uh, they're inedible, they're poisonous, they're going to give you a very bad stomach if you eat them and generally they're just not a very nice flavour. So we'll discard those. So all we do with those is literally pull them off and put them straight into the bin. They're on both sides. And then you're left with just the, the well, the uh, bottom part of the skull, I suppose. So there's the mouth there, there with the eyes. And then what we're going to do 
Here we've got all the brown crab. So what we can do with this, and we'll, we will use it for later, is we can scoop out all this, blend it, and it makes a beautiful, um, very crabby um, dressing. Or you can add it back into the white crab meat. We're not gonna use it for this dish, but we'll use it for something else in the hotel. Next job is basically to pick the crab. Now, for this, we're gonna take this um, bottom part of the skull, and we're gonna get our knife and just straight through. Discard the tail, we don't need that. And then, and then we're gonna get a clean bowl. You can use a crab pick, you can use a, a metal skewer, you can use anything, a small, a small fork. I, I use some tweezers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick inside all these little cavities and pull out all that delicious crab meat. You can be quite firm, because the cartilage is quite uh, quite hard. We're gonna pick through it in the end anyway, to make sure we don't get any any extra pieces of shell. As you can see, every, every leg has a bit of crab in it. Now this bit is probably the non-fun part. It's probably the most tedious part because it is scraping in tiny little cavities to get as much out of the crab as possible. But you see, we're still getting about half a portion there just from those four legs. So yeah, it doesn't look a lot, but then when we add it with everything else, it really will be. There's still a lot of meat in there. Give it a good shake. You can see it all just coming out away from the shell. The crab claws. I tend to do it in this in this way because I find that by the time I get to the claws, I'm pretty bored of picking down through tiny little cavities and holes, whereas the most of the yield comes from this. It's quite a refreshing way to finish the job. So what we're gonna do, it has four sections. There's no meat in that, we can discard that. There's a tiny bit of meat in here. Again, not a massive amount but still some. We could take a cloth, the back of a knife, a little bang, break out the shell. And again, you see, there's not much meat, but when you're using an expensive product, you want to get as most out of it as possible. And then as it goes on, it gets slightly, slightly more, more meat out of out of it as it gets bigger. Don't worry too much about it. if a bit of shell goes in at the moment because we are going to pick through, but if you do see big bits, pick it out straight away. And then next, the final part of the crab preparation are the big claws. Again, these have Three sections, one, two, three. There's a big sort of feather leaf cartilage that goes through here, which we're gonna to have to pick out. And we're gonna break it up, as you see, straight away. So much more meat straight off, straight off. And that's just from opening up just one little bit. Again, get your tweezers in there. Give it a good shake. With the claws, what we're going to do, we're going to, again with a tea towel, this just protects it for when we hit it. We're going to just fold over the tea towel and then with the back of a heavy base knife, we're just going to give it a quick smack. You could use a hammer. And you see how we've just started to crack it here now. And then we're going to just, just pick off the big bits of shell. We don't want to hit it too hard because if we hit it too hard, we're going to make smaller pieces of shell. The smaller piece of shell you get, the harder it is to pick. So we're trying to make our lives a bit easier here just by doing just the right amount of hitting. And then you can see all that beautiful, beautiful crab meat that's in there. That's all meat in there. So now, again, the same principle. We are just gonna pick off the crab, as you can see, this is a lot more fun, a lot more quicker. The crab meat is flying out. 
And then, as we go down, you can see, here comes that, that bit of cartilage I was talking about. We need to get that off. Best way to do this is to pull the two, two uh, claws apart. That then opens it up. Then pull out the crab bottom part of the claw. And again, with this, you can lift it up, twist it out. And again, just run our fingers down through. And that's the bit of cartilage I was on about. Discard that. And the same with this claw. In we go. And that comes the claw. And that is how we pick our crab. Crab, we're now going to pick through it to make sure there's no shell. So what we're going to do is with our fingertips, just lightly press down through, making sure that there's no small pieces of shell in it. Now, best practice is to do this three times minimum. Here at Bowwood we do it five times, just to make sure that there's no shell that goes in. And then once you have your crab mix like that, we can then start the next process. Now what we've got here are some lovely apples from the estate from Lee Lansdowne's garden. These are called Red Discoveries. Beautiful apples. As you can see, they're slightly pink and slightly uh, white inside. And we're just going to dice up this. This is going to create some acidity in the crab and also give it a little crunch as well. So what we're going to do now is do a small dice. This again is a nice skill that you're going to need throughout your whole career. Add that into the crab. Like I said, this is going to give the dish a bit of richness, a bit of acidity. This creme fraiche has already had a bit, it's very, very sour. So we're not going to add any lemon juice to it at the moment because it's very, very sour. It's a very, very rich one as well. Normally, if you're just using probably shop bought one, then you would add lemon juice to give it even more acidity. But because of that and the apples, this dish will not need any, uh, any more acidity. Now for the plating, this is how you plate it at Bowood, but you, by all means you guys would be adventurous as you want and do whatever you want to do. First things first, we've got the nice warm crumpet, that's going to sit just off centre. Then we've got our crab mix. So already we've got the warm crumpet, we've got, we've got the cold crab. And now this is the kohlrabi. You can see how it's gone very uh, crisp. The same as the cucumber. So cucumber on top, kohlrabi. Finish that with some of the spring onions. And now we're gonna decorate it with some of these lovely, lovely uh, microgreens from Coppercress. You can do it however you want, but you wanna try and think that they all wanna have the same amount of flavor every time they get a certain bite. So we're gonna, these, these ones here are flavored like um, star anise. So it's gonna add a really nice sort of fennel flavor. Fennel and crab go really well together. Then we've got these beautiful little ice, ice ones that will go on the top here. These add a certain cool of freshness. So when you have that with the Thai puree, it's gonna mellow it out completely. And then for a little bit of color, we're gonna add on these, these purple ones. Very lucky at the moment, we are working with Coppercress UK and they have this thing here called Moi Caviar, which is basically a Japanese baby seaweed. And it just literally bursts of the ocean in your mouth. We're very lucky, not many chefs have actually got to use this yet. And then for the final part, just a bit of the Thai puree, which we're just gonna sit just off center. And there we have it. Crab crumb, Cornish crab crumpet with Thai puree.